In this lesson, we will study the rotational counterpart of momentum. Momentum is P equals to mv. So the angular momentum, which we use L for, is the rotational counterpart for the mass is the rotational inertia. The rotational counterpart for V is omega. So it's I omega. And we know that the momentum is conserved if the net force is zero. That means the angular momentum would be conserved if the net torque is zero. So a merry-go-round with rotational inertia I rotating at angular velocity omega has an angular momentum I omega. And the angular momentum, just like momentum, is also a vector. In this course, we usually use clockwise or counterclockwise for the direction of rotation. So we would say that this merry-go-round has an angular momentum of I omega in the clockwise direction. What if there's a Lego person traveling to the left along a straight line? Does he have angular momentum? It depends. It depends on what rotational axis we're referring to. For example, here's another Lego person. And let's make him stare at the moving guy and see what happens. What happened? The one with white hat had to turn his head to keep his eyes on the moving guy. This means that relative to the white hat guy, the person moving along a straight line does have angular motion and therefore has angular momentum. But is there any way for the guy moving along a straight line to not have angular momentum? Yes, if he moves straight towards the white hat guy, or straight away from the white hat guy. Either way, the white hat guy would not have to turn his head. So an object moving along a straight line can have angular momentum. For example, consider a point mass m moving at a constant velocity v. Let's find its angular momentum relative to this axis. Since the point mass has a constant velocity, no acceleration, the net force on the point mass must be zero. Let's just say there are no forces acting on it. Therefore, there is no torque acting on it either. If the net torque on the point mass is zero, the angular momentum of the point mass would be conserved. So while the point mass moves, its angular momentum would stay a constant. So to find the angular momentum of the point mass, we can choose any point along this line, and we would get the same angular momentum. In this case, the easiest place to look at is right here. When the mass is here, moving at the velocity v, the point mass will look exactly the same as a point mass that is doing circular motion around this axis at speed v. For a point mass circling around the axis at speed v, its angular momentum is I omega. The rotational inertia of a point mass is m r squared, if the r is this distance. And what is the omega? Omega would be v over r. So we can cancel one of the r's, and this will give us this one more r left, r times mv. So it's r times the momentum, mv. So this is the angular momentum of the point mass when it gets to this location. And since the angular momentum stays a constant, that means that this is the same angular momentum when the mass is here. When the mass is here, this r is not the distance between the point mass and the axis, but the perpendicular distance. Kind of like the lever arm. This perpendicular distance is the distance between the line of motion and the axis. So we will write it like this. So for a point mass, 
we can use the angular momentum equals to I omega or the perpendicular R times MV or the perpendicular R times momentum. Depending on what's given in a problem, sometimes the one is more convenient to use than others. By the way, if the point mass moves straight toward the axis or straight away from the axis, the perpendicular R, the distance between the line of motion and the axis, would be zero, which means this point mass has no angular momentum relative to the axis.